It was an incredible divergence. Every seed ship had carried Earth's cultural norms, the consensus ideology of a liberal democratic state. Mitanni's colonists should have inherited those norms. Mitanni's colonists expressed no interest in those norms. There was no oppression, no sign of unrest or discontent, no government or judicial system at all, no corporations or markets, just an array of specialized functions to which workers assigned themselves, their numbers fed by batteries of synthetic wombs. There was no entertainment, no play, no sex, no social performance of gender, no family units. Biological sex had been flattened into a population of sterile females, slender and lightly muscled. No sense wasting calories on physical strength with exoskeletons available, Tian explained. It's a resource conservation strategy. You can't build a society like this using ordinary humans, I said. It wouldn't be stable. Free riders would play havoc. Tian nodded. They've been rewired. I think it started with the first generation out of the seed ship. They made themselves selfless so that they could survive. It struck me that when the civilization on Mitanni built their own seed ships, they would be able to do this again. If they could endure Mitanni, they could endure anything. They could have the galaxy. I was not someone who rushed to judgment. They told me that, during the final round of crew selection, deliberative, centered, disconnected from internal affect, high emotional latency, suited for tiebreaker role. I swept the imagery shut between my hands, compressing it into a point of light. Looked up at Tien with a face that must have signaled loathing or revulsion because she lifted her chin in warning. Don't, she said. Don't leap to conclusions. I'm not. You're thinking about ant hives. I can see it. Is that a bad analogy? Yes. Passion, surfacing and subsiding. Ant hives only function because each individual derives a fitness benefit, even if they sacrifice themselves. It's kin selective eusociality. This is total selfless devotion to the state, to survival. She lifted a mosaic of images from the air, a smiling woman driving a needle into her thigh, a gang of laborers running into a fire, heedless of their own safety, to rescue vital equipment. They're born, they learn, they specialize, they work, sleep, eat, and eventually they volunteer to die. It's the opposite of an insect hive. They don't cooperate for their own individual benefit, they don't seem to care about themselves at all. It's pure altruism. Cognitive, not instinctive. They're brilliant, and they all come to the same conclusion. Cooperation and sacrifice. The image of the smiling woman with the needle did not leave me when the shifting mosaic carried her away. Do you admire that? It's a society that could never evolve on its own. It has to be designed. She stared into the passing images with an intensity I'd rarely seen outside of deep study or moments of love, a ferocious need to master some vexing, elusive truth. I want to know how they did it. How do they disable social behavior without losing theory of mind? How can they remove all culture and sex and still motivate? We saw plenty of ways to motivate on Jutenheim, I said. Maybe I was thinking of Anya Hera, taking her stance by some guilty reflex, because there was nothing about my tone disconnected from internal affect. I expected anger. Tien surprised me. She swept the air clear of her work, came to the couch and sat beside me. Her eyes were gentle. I'm sorry we have to do this again, she said. Anya Hera will forgive you. Twice in a row? She thought Jutenheim was the greatest atrocity in human history. A crime beyond forgiveness or repair, remember? And I let it stand. I walked away. I took Thien's shoulder, gripped the swell of her deltoid, the strength that had caught Anya Hera's eye two decades ago. Two decades for us, on Earth, centuries now. Thien stroked my cheek. You only have two options. Walk away or burn it all. You knew you weren't qualified to judge an entire world. But that's why we're here. To judge. To find out whether the price of survival ever became too high. Whether what survived wasn't human. She leaned in and kissed me softly. Mankind changes, she said. This, what you are? Her hands touched my face, my chest. People used to think this was wrong. There were men and women and nothing else, nothing more or different. I caught her wrists. That's not the same, Tien. I'm just saying technology changes things. We change ourselves. 
If everyone had judged what you are as harshly as Anya Hera judged Jutenheim, I tightened my grip. She took a breath, perhaps reading my anger as play, and that made it worse. Jutenheim's people are slaves, I said. I can be what I want. It's not the same at all. No, of course not, she lowered her eyes. You're right. That was an awful example. I'm sorry.